um, we would strongly recommend that that be done. And uh, through Sophos Mobile Control, you can push down profile or policy whereby a strong password is um, enforced. Something like, uh, for example, specifying the minimum number of characters that you use in a passcode and possibly some complexity, like it's got to be alphanumeric, etc. You can configure all that and push it down to the phone to ensure that the phone has a, a uh, secure passcode on it or pass, um, password. Um, the information we can get back on the uh, device, there's a few of the things listed there, but I'll show you those on the console in a sec. So just going through quickly um, how the uh, Sophos Mobile Control client is um, deployed out to the devices. This is uh, a simple deployment where you might have the Sophos Mobile Control server sitting in the DMZ. The laptop you can see on the right hand side uh, has, uh, that's basically in this diagram represents uh, someone using the, um, the web interface of the Sophos Mobile Control console, communicating through HTTPS to the Sophos Mobile Control server. Basically, to um, deploy the Sophos Mobile Control client out to the device, the administrator would um, use the console to register the device, supply some basic information about the device. They will then be sent out when, and then, sorry, if the administrator then says, okay, I want to um, deploy it to this device, the SMC server would communicate through HTTPS to the Sophos mobile, con sorry, Sophos SMS server, uh, and this is a Sophos server, so you don't need to worry about um, having to set up SMS capabilities, that'll all be done by Sophos. The SMS server will send out an SMS to the device. Once that uh, is done, the SMS is received by the device and uh, the user will have to tap on the link that's provided in the device. It will then communicate over the air with the SMC server and download uh, the, either the, the software or the profile that's required, configure the device, and uh, it'll all be done quite simply. Now with the um, Apple type devices, for example iPhones, uh, what in actual fact happens is that uh, exact same thing happens with the initial deployment. An SMS is sent out to the device. The device then communicates with the SMC server and is configured and set up. Any subsequent um, configuration change to the uh, iPhones will actually be sent out via Apple's Apple Push Notification Service. This is... Um, basically the way that Apple has decreed things have to work, and that's not just for us, this is basically for um, any Apple-based uh, mobile device management solution. And uh, so if we, for example, want to set a new policy with an iPhone, um, we set it on the SMC, Sophos Mobile Control console. Um, that will then, uh, when we want to push it out to the device, that will go to the Apple Push Notification server which will then push it out over the Apple Push Notification Network to the device. Uh, that that uh, Apple Push Notification Service does require, um, as per Apple's decree, that you have to sign up for the iOS Developers Kit. And uh, signing up for that iOS Developers Kit, I believe, costs $299 US per annum. So that's pretty much something that you, you can't get around. If you want to control Apple devices, no matter who, whose solution you use, you're going to have to organise to uh, be able to sign up to that um, development program. So looking at a, a, a little more complicated land type deployment, you may not wish to have this SMC server public facing. So you might want to put the uh, Sophos mobile control server in your LAN and set up a reverse proxy in your DMZ to face the, the big bad outside world. So really it's just uh, extending, um, pushing the server back into the LAN and, and extending the communications to go via the uh, reverse proxy there. As you can see, the initial setup, we'd have the, um, the administrator use the console to configure and uh, deploy push out the deployment of the device, which would then go to the reverse proxy, which would push it out to the SMC, sorry, SMS server, 
and send the SM out, S out to the device, which would then communicate with uh, back over the air using HTTPS to the uh, reverse proxy and everything would be configured. You can also see we've got here in the LAN um, Exchange Server. This is uh, to enable the access to the Exchange Mail and also um, Active Directory to uh, verify users um, when they use the self-service portal. And uh, we can see in this diagram then with the, the bolded lines, slight difference with the uh, Apple push notification service. You'll see that uh, that will be used for iOS devices. Management console demo. Okay, if you just bear with me for a sec, I'll switch over to uh, the Sophos Mobile Control console and I will give you a demonstration, hopefully without screwing things up from a um, webcast perspective. Okay, hopefully now you can see the Sophos Mobile Control screen. You can, excellent, that's good. So this is the front log on screen, so I will just uh, log in to the console. And we will get the uh, front, front page basically here, the welcome to Sophos Mobile Control screen. Uh, where will I start from here? Okay, well, let's have a look at inventory and devices. This will show a list of the devices that have been registered with the, the console, with the server, sorry. Now, this is actually a, uh, a, an internal Sophos uh, evaluation slash demonstration server. So it's a bit of a hodgepodge of devices that are constantly changing for uh, development and test and trial type purposes. So it's probably not quite as disciplined as your normal type arrangement. But you can see there are a list of a variety of devices. Um, there's some Android devices, there's some iPods and iPads listed there. You'll see that a couple of them have a red dot with a cross on them. This indicates that uh, these devices are registered and, and known by the um, server, but actually aren't under the management of the server at the moment. The ones with the green dots and the ticks are the ones that are currently managed by Sophos Mobile Control. If we want to have a look at the details of one of these devices, let's have a look at Aaron's HTC Desire. We click on the magnifying glass and we'll get some details about this particular device. You'll see um, the name, the description of the device, this device has actually been put into a group, so it shows that a group. Uh, it shows the operating system on the device, the phone number for the device, and when it was last synchronized with the console, sorry, with the server. Um, the default is that the device is synchronized with the server once every 24 hours, but if you wish to find out exactly what's happening with the device right now, you can click on this icon just here, and that will refresh the data um, from the device to the server. If we have a look at some of the information that we can see for this device, we can see the IMEI number, we can see the battery level even, whether Bluetooth's enabled, whether it's currently roaming, and we can see if the device has been wiped, uh, all kinds of other stuff there. We can see um, the IMSI number, for example, uh, so there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can see, volume, even even the volume settings, look at that, whether uh, the vibration's on, etc., and whether Wi-Fi is enabled. So a whole bunch of stuff that you can see about the device um, if you want to know exactly what's happening with it. If we go to this box here, if I wanted to send a text message to this box or to a group of users, I can simply click on this and, for example, if I wanted to send out an alert or a warning to a user or a group of users, um, you can simply use this text, text message box and you can put in a message and send it out. Maybe it's a reminder, for example, to the users that have either that device or the devices in a group. If we click on Show Install Software, this icon here, we will get a list of the applications that are running on this particular device. Now this is an Android device and quite typically there's a whole bunch of stuff running on it, 197 entries. 
and you'll notice the good old Angry Birds is on there. Um, this is Aaron's device and he likes his Angry Birds. So we have all these um, applications. I won't run, won't run through the uh, nine screens worth of applications, but you can see exactly what's running on uh, this device at this time. So if I go back from there, um, that was uh, showing the application, so the installed software. This is the refresh. As I said before, this one will cause the device to resynchronize with the server. With Android devices, we can get some traffic information. We can show Wi-Fi, GSM, and GSM roaming uh, bandwidth usage uh, per month. And oh, I don't. Uh, I'm running this on. Uh, uh, someone else's laptop here and you need to actually have this uh, plugin installed. So I can't show you, normally um, I could show you uh, some graphs basically indicating the, the bandwidth usage for this device each month and then for that month you can plug in, uh, sorry not plug in, you can click on that month and it will break it down into a day by day um, display. We can also set over here uh, a warning so that at a certain point the GSM, once it reaches that limit, the warning will be uh, given to the administrators. Yeah, sorry about that. This is the the um, disadvantage of running on someone else's computer that's not necessarily set up the way I normally have it. So I can't show you those uh, those graphs. So what we can do as well is we can. Oh, okay. No, sorry. I should go back. Better finish doing what I was doing, shouldn't I? So I'll just show you the last two icons. There we have. Apart from the traffic counter, we have. This is the. Uh, the icon so that you can lock the device. Uh, so this is the one that if I wanted to, for example, lock uh, Aaron's HTC Desire, I'd simply click on that uh, and it will say, do I really want to do this? Now, I'm not going to do it right now because I don't know if uh, Aaron's using the device. He might get upset with me if I did. But if I did, I'd just have to click on that lock and it would happen within a literally within a matter of seconds. I'll say no for the moment. Um, same sort of deal with wipe device. If I click on that, Again, it will say, are you sure you really want to, really sure you want to wipe Aaron's HTC desire? I better not do that. He might get upset, so I'll say no. But if I did say yes, then basically it will say, it will just go and do it, and it'll literally take seconds. We can set up devices um, into groups, so that if you have uh, groups uh, from common sets, for example, uh, various departments, and you want to treat them as groups instead of individual devices, you can uh, configure the groups here. Pretty straightforward. It's just basically listing the devices that are registered um, within groups, <coughs> groups, if that's what you wish to do, if that's going to make things easier. So um, to provision devices, um, basically, for example, for an Android or Windows Mobile control device, you simply click on First, you need to register the device uh, in the inventory devices there. You just click on the plus button and you just provide a name, a description, the operating system that's involved, uh, that, that the device has, and the phone number. And that's basically it. And uh, so then if you want to push out the, the client to the uh, device, you simply click on SMC client install. You say, OK, I want to install it to Neil's Android, for example. Click on next and the software is the SMC client, so that's what I want to do. So I click on Next again, and this is where I can sh either schedule it to happen at a particular date and time, and uh, otherwise I can just click on Now and it will happen immediately. If I clicked on that now, it will push it down. Now, again, because this is a test environment, apparently I'm, I'm doing this with Neil's Android, so I don't really want to do that now because I don't know um, who Neil is even at this point in time, given that this is uh, just an evaluation environment. So I won't do that right now, but that's all it takes to actually push it out to the client from the, uh, the console side of things. If it's an iOS device, we choose this iOS MDM client bootstrap option. It's the same sort of deal. Choose the device like this AUS uh, iPhone. Or if, for example, I want to push out a group, here's where I would select the group of devices. Click on Next and send it out. It's that easy. And again, I won't push that out to this device at this point in time. 
so far as applications are concerned, 